From the river to the sea, people should know what that means. It means kill or expel every Jew between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. A second holocaust. Now, we had a ceasefire on October 6th. Hamas's forces exploded out and killed 1,400 people, took 240 roughly hostages. Now, their fighters could have stayed in Israel and fought. Instead, they quickly retreated behind their human shields. Now, uh, we hear those calling for a ceasefire. Hamas has declared that they want a ceasefire, has declared what they would do with a ceasefire. They would regroup, and these are the words of just a few days ago of a senior member of their Politburo, and then they would do another October 7th, and another after that, and two, and three, and four times until Israel is destroyed. So those who delight in the 1,400 Israeli deaths, and the butchered babies, and the raped women, of course, join that call for a regroup ceasefire and a chance to do October 7 two, three, four, five times. Now, in any war, a country has got to weigh achieving its military objectives, avoiding casualties of its own forces, and minimizing civilian casualties on the other side. Israel has gone beyond the United States and any other country in every way to sacrifice its own soldiers, to sacrifice or delay its military objectives in order to avoid civilian casualties. When in our bombing of North Vietnam or Germany or Japan did we ever warn civilians or anyone else and give up the possible surprise? When did we provide food shipments to Nazi Germany or Japan or North Vietnam? In fact, it was a British and American blockade of Germany and Austro-Hungary that pretty much led to their defeat, a food blockade. When did we ever provide fuel shipments to Japan or Germany or North Vietnam? In fact, we bombed and destroyed every fuel facility we could. Yet Israel warns. Israel facilitates food and America, its ally, pays for that food. And Israel uh, uh, is uh, uh, allowing fuel in, in spite of the fact that Hamas stockpiles it. Um, as uh, I have the obscure honor of being the only CPA on this committee, and so I focused a little bit on casualty statistics. Even if you accept Hamas casualty statistics as being honest, if a Hamas fighter who happens to be 17 gets blown up by his own rocket while trying to kill Israeli civilians with it, they count that as a child casualty for which Israel should be held responsible. If a rocket falls, as one-third of them do, onto Gaza and explodes, as it did at that famous hospital, uh, they try to hold Israel responsible. And if Israel kills a Hamas commander, that death is included along the deaths that we are now told are the civilian casualties. Uh, Ms. Uh, Assistant uh, Secretary, we hear calls for a ceasefire. Is there any proof that if a ceasefire were declared today that the, uh, all the hostages would be released tomorrow or immediately? No, Congressman, there's not. There's no guarantee. Now, Israeli officials are doing a lot uh, to minimize civilian casualties. They provide the warnings. We've seen several humanitarian pauses, um, basically a permanent pause around the Rafah Gate. Uh, can you describe in other ways uh, how IDF uh, has uh, reduced civilian casualties? Or perhaps the Deputy Assistant Secretary. Let me start by adding uh, even more details to your outline of what Israel does to prioritize protection of civilians. They have dropped 1.5 million leaflets in Gaza asking civilians to evacuate. They have sent over hundreds of thousands of text messages and made phone calls to cell phones warning of their If operation. I can interrupt, did we ever provide leaflets over Hanoi? To my knowledge, no. Not I'm older, knowledge, I remember. Sir. Go ahead. Uh, we know that Israel uh, 
we in our conversations with the Israel Defense Forces, they have made very clear uh, that they assess collateral damage estimates before they take strikes. They have legal reviews through their chain of command. And when there are incidents of civilian harm, they investigate them after.